Our scripture lesson used as the sermon text tonight is the second reading for tonight. I'll read especially the first four verses of it from Hebrews chapter 10. The Holy Spirit also testifies in scripture to us. For first he said, This is the covenant I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws on their hearts, and I will write them on their mind. Then he adds, and I will not remember their sins and their lawlessness any longer. Now, where these sins are forgiven, there is no longer any sacrifice for sin. Dear friends in Christ, Decades ago, I was visiting an elderly woman in a hospital, had a devotion with her, talked about how she's righteous in God's sight and forgiven, and she was very uneasy. And she finally said, you know, I, I don't know if I'm really forgiven. I don't really know if I'm going to heaven. So I asked her to, you know, explain why she thought that. She finally said, I'm going to tell you something I've never told anyone my entire life. Many decades ago, when I was a young, newly married woman, I became pregnant, didn't want to be, got an abortion. Now, this is decades before Roe v. Wade. Never told my husband. Never told anyone. Am I righteous in God's eyes? Am I forgiven? You know, there are certain things that we have difficulty believing we can be forgiven for. A lot of our sins, we say, well, you know, yeah, it wasn't that bad, or, you know, I can, I can make up for it. But the things that seem to especially trouble us are the ones that we can't really make up for. A drunk driver kills someone. How do you make up for that? A person doesn't have much time to visit their parents anymore. And then mom or dad dies suddenly. And how, how do I cope with the fact that I, I should have been there more? I should have visited them. You have a relative that you had a argument with and you just haven't spoken for years and then that person dies and now what do you do to make up for it we like to think that we can somehow make up for what we do and yet some things we know we can't there are words we say that we can never pull back into our mouth again. We regret it for perhaps years. We think back to when we were younger and some of the stupid things we did and said, but what really bothers us are those, those hurtful things we did to maybe tease or haze someone or hurtful words we said thinking, yeah, it's a big joke, and yet we knew how deeply it wounded that person. Maybe your paths have parted for many years now. You don't know where the person lives. You can't make it up to them. You can't even say you're sorry. You don't know them anymore. Yes, we have trouble forgiving ourselves for certain things. 
So how do we deal with this guilt? Sometimes we don't deal with it very well at all. Sometimes we think, well, I'll, I'll do something to make up for it in a different way. I'll, I'll punish myself for it. Sometimes not consciously. Sometimes it's subconscious and we end up doing things that are injurious to ourselves. Take it out on ourselves that are very, very harmful to us. So how do we deal with such guilt? Tonight, we celebrate Maundy Thursday. We're reminded of the supper Jesus gave us. We're reminded of, of that word covenant. The covenant that he gave us. That new covenant he gave us. And as we look carefully at not only the words that Jesus spoke that night, but also the words that he had the Holy Spirit inspire here in his letter to the Hebrews, we see what that really means, this new covenant. That it means no more sacrifices for sin. Really let this sink into our minds and hearts. We, we should take a look again at this, this word covenant. A new covenant implies, obviously, there was an old covenant old agreement. You're probably familiar with the covenants in the Old Testament, especially the covenant God made with the Israelites on Mount Sinai, right? You, you be my people, you live according to the special laws I'm giving you, and I will be your God and bless you. It was a two-way covenant. And the people said, yeah, we'll do it. And sometimes they tried and sometimes they didn't. Sometimes they succeeded and sometimes they didn't. And the times they didn't seem to outnumber the times they did. No surprise there. The laws that God gave them in the Old Testament were incredibly difficult to obey. For it wasn't just all those moral laws, don't steal, don't kill. But all those ceremonial laws, you know, don't touch this and, and don't eat that. And if this happens, you know, don't, don't dare touch that dead body or you're unclean for so many days. And it, it was almost impossible, it seemed, to keep it them all. But God made a, a way around that. Something to do when they messed up, which was a, pretty much a daily occurrence, right? They could bring a sacrifice. To make up for it. There was something they could do to make up for it. <laughs> but it still required blood. The blood of that lamb or goat or sheep. And that impressed something on them. Imagine how, how you would feel. You, you did something that you shouldn't, and so you have to take that, that lamb that, that you, you watched the sheep give birth to, and you helped raise that lamb over this past year, and now you had to see that lamb slaughtered because of you, because you messed up. But that's what it took. And then impressed on their minds and hearts that sinning against God is a big deal. It brings death. And thankfully, there was a substitute. So that it wasn't my death, it was that animal's death. But God promised that there would be someone who would take away that old covenant and put in place a new covenant, 
The prophet Jeremiah spoke of it, and we'll read that later on in the service. The new covenant. A new covenant that would not require the sacrifice of the animals. It would require a different sacrifice. A sacrifice that they wouldn't have to keep doing day after day after day. It wouldn't just make up for something I did today or yesterday. It would make up for everything, for all time. This new covenant. And now on Monday, Thursday, Jesus says to his disciples as he gives them bread and wine, Here, this, this is the blood of the new covenant. The new testament as this translation phrases it. Yes, a last will and testament is a covenant also. But it's not a two-sided covenant. The last will and testament doesn't say, when I die, then if you do this, then I'll give you this. No. It says, when I die, I leave you this. That's it. No strings attached. Jesus said, I'm, I'm giving you in this bread and wine the sacrifice that will end all sacrifices. I'm giving you the sacrifice that will remove all guilt and all sin for all time. And this here, as you're receiving it, is actually that that very sacrifice, it's my body and blood. That's why the writer to the Hebrews says, and I will not remember their sins and their lawlessness any longer. Now where these sins are forgiven, there's no longer any sacrifice for sin. When we tell ourselves, I can't forgive myself for that. We're arguing with God. There's no more sacrifice of sin. There's nothing I have to do. There's nothing I can do to make up for it because it's already been made up for. It's been completely paid for. And it's not just the sins that really bother us, that there's no way we can undo that fall under this no more sacrifice for sin. It's all sin. Because finally, even the things we think we can make up for, we don't really make up for. The sin has been committed. There's nothing I can do to make myself what God wants me to be. But he says, I love you anyway. And I'm paying the bill. I'm providing the sacrifice. And it's my own body. And it's my own blood. And you are now forgiven. It's so hard for us to think of not making up for things. Whenever we do stuff that we know is wrong, we, we have this, this impulse to make up for it. And there's a part of that that's good. Certainly, if we've hurt somebody, we want to apologize. If we've taken something from somebody, we want to give them back what it is. But that's not in order to make it right. That's not in order to receive forgiveness. That's not in order to get rid of the guilty feeling in my heart and my conscience. But there is no sacrifice for sin anymore. Because Christ, the Lamb, has been sacrificed. What we do is simply our way of saying, thanks to God, now I get to do the right thing for Him, for His sake, and to show love to my fellow person. There's no more sacrifice for sin. 
how freeing that is. When we think we can't forgive ourselves, we hear Jesus say, I've already forgiven you. When we're feeling that load of guilt over, I messed up again today, the same thing I thought I'd not do, I did again. No more sacrifice is necessary. It's already paid for. I am forgiven. What a blessing that is. In the Lord's Supper, and as you receive it tonight, remember that's Jesus saying, your guilt is forgiven. It's gone. There's no more sacrifices you need to make. There's nothing you have to do to make up for anything. I've already made up for it. Now go and live your life in love and service to each other and to God himself. No more sacrifices for sin. Amen. Our choir.